derivatives part one. Because we did average rate of change last time. And I also, okay, I think it was in a video also. And uh, so today we'll do derivatives. But actually, let's, let's review average rate of change just for a second. Okay, so we did this last time, I think, but let's just review it because it's, uh, derivatives are about the same thing. Very much related. So, uh, to calculate, calculate the average rate of change of the given function. So here's a function here. And uh, so they want you to figure out the average rate of change. And here they want you to do it between 0 and 2. So for example, at 0, you can see the height of the function is what? Minus 3. So in other words, when x is 0, y is minus 3. And when x is 2, y is 6. So how, how much did the height of the function change? between 0 and 2. Went from minus 3 to 6, so it changed by 9, right? By positive 9. And over what distance, over what distance did it take, how much uh, distance did it take to change from negative 3 to 6? It went from 0 to 2, in other words, it, uh, an interval of 2. So what was the average rate of change? 4.5, right? Anybody not get that? If you don't understand, raise your hand. Okay. So, uh, if we were going to draw that picture, what does it look like? So, we said at, uh, at uh, two, 0, it was equal to negative 3. So that's one point on the, on the curve. And at 2, it was equal to 6. That's another point on the curve, and another one is at 1, it was equal to 4. OK, does so everyone see that? So we don't know what the function looks like in between. In fact, maybe it's not even defined in between, but let's just pretend we knew what it looked like. Let's just suppose it looked like this, something like that. Okay, I, they didn't tell us that, I just did that. Okay, but suppose it did look like that. Now, what did, what did we just calculate? What did they ask us to calculate? They said uh, between 0 and 2, what was the average rate of change? So that means um, we'll call this uh, well, first of all, what's, what are the coordinates of this point? 0, 3. And what are the coordinates of this point? 2, 6. 2, 6. And we can call this value x1, y1. And we can call this one x2, y2. And what we want to know is uh, the average rate of change means the change in y. So delta, that simple, this triangle, is called delta because it's a Greek d, like the delta in Greek d. Uh, so delta means, uh, we use that to signify changes. So this means change in y. And delta x means change x. So we have the change in y over the change in x, which we mean, by that we mean y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But in this particular case, that's 6 minus 3. No, 6 minus minus 3. Whoops. 6 minus minus 3 over 
2 minus 0, right? So what is that? 6 plus 3, 9 over 2, or 4.5. Okay? So what did we just calculate in terms of the picture? We just calculated something. I mean, we just calculated the average rate of change, but in terms of the graph, we can say we, we calculated something. Can anybody guess what I'm talking about? What did we just calculate? This 4.5 is what? In terms of this picture, can you say anything? Isn't it uh, the slope also equals the slope of the line from, let me call this point A, let me call this point B. So it's the slope of the line from where to where? From A that connects A and B, right? From A to B. Does everyone agree with that? So the average rate of change is also that slope. Right? Everyone agree with that? Okay. So we talked about now the average rate of change. Does anybody have a question about it? Let's see. We did these problems. So I guess you did all of these so you understand that. Uh, how about, let's take a look at this one though, just before we go on. Okay, here, what, what's the x-axis here? Years. It's years, right? It's time, right? And what's the y-axis? Volatility index measures the extent to which a market undergoes sudden change in value. The volatility of market A, as measured by one such index, was increasing, oh sorry, was decreasing at an average rate of 0 0.4 points per year, and then was increasing at an average rate of 0 0.7 points per year. So in here it was increase, it was uh, sorry, decreasing, and then in here it was increasing. Okay? In 1995, the volatility of market A was 1.1. Use this information to give a rough sketch of the volatility. So, uh, between 1991 and 1995, in this period, it was what? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it was decreasing, right? So, this one is wrong because this is increasing in that period, right? And this one is wrong because it's increasing in that period. So it's either this one or this one. Okay? And then they give us one more piece of information. They say that um, in 1995, here, the volatility was 1.1. So that this is not 1.1. The height of this is not 1.1, right? The height of this is less than 1, because this is 0.4, less than 1. So it must be this one. So the answer would be this one. Okay, does everyone get that? Very understand? So anyway, uh, this is obviously decreasing and increasing. And this one is decreasing and increasing, and so on. Any questions about that? Okay, so can we go on to the next section? Anybody have any questions about the average rate of change? Okay. So let's go on to derivatives. So let's look at this. So, estimate the derivative from the table of average rates of change. Okay. So, we have to do this. So, suppose that we have
Suppose we have a curve that looks like, let's try y equals x minus 3 squared. How about that? So what does that look like? What kind of curve is that? It's a parabola. Right. And um, where does it have its vertex? Where does it, it, it's an upward facing parabola. And where does it have its vertex? That is, where does it have its lowest point? 3, 0. Where? 3, 0. At 3, three. comma, zero. 0. Right. 3, comma, 0. That's the vertex, right? So you should have learned that in uh, fundamental math, right? That this is uh, basically the same graph as this, but it's shifted over to the right. Okay, so I won't go into that, but you should have learned that. So that means it looks like something like that, right? Something like that, right? Okay, now, uh, what's the value at 4? When y equals 4, what is x? I'm sorry, when x equals 4, what is y? 1, right? And what's the value at 5? 4, right? So let's write, this is um, 4, I'm no, sorry, yeah, 4 comma 1. And this is 5, um, 4, right? Okay. So what's the average rate of change? Uh, between uh, 4, 1 and What's the average rate of change between 4, 1 and 5, 4? So it's the same thing we did in the last example. So we want uh, delta y over delta x. And so what is that? That's um, 4 minus, did I do that right? Yeah. 4 minus 1 over 5 minus 4, right? Is that right? Did I do that right or wrong? Everything okay? Okay. So what do I have? What's that equal? The average rate of change is three, right? Okay, and that is a that is also the slope of what? Oh uh, no. Well, this no. The slope of That is also the slope of that line, right? The line that connects those two points, right? That's the same, that's the slope, right, of that line. It's supposed to be a line. And um, okay, now, uh, Now suppose you wanted to get the slope, well anyway, so this yellow line, when we have a circle, I have a circle, and if I pick any line that connects two, two points on the circle, that's called a secant line. It's called a secant. Secant line. And what's the name of the largest secant line in the circle? 
What's the name of the largest secant line on a in a circle? What? Diameter, right? So this is also a secant line, but it's the largest one. It's the diameter, right? But there are many secant lines, right? Okay. Now, what what do we call um, a line like this? What do we call a line like that blue one? It's called a tangent line, right? Tangent line. Okay? So, now, going back to this picture, we just said that the average rate of change between 4 and 5 was, what did we say? 3. Now, let me ask you, what, how about if I if I said the average rate of change between uh, x equals 3 and x equals, no, sorry, between x equals 4 and x equals 6, is that going to be more or less than the average rate of change between uh, 4 and 5? We just did the average rate of change between four, x equals 4 and x equals 5. How about if we did the average rate of change between 4 and 6? Is that going to be more, more or less or the same as the average rate of change? Uh, between, which one is going to be bigger, 4 and 6 or 4 and 5? 4 and 6. Which one? 4 and 6. 6, right? Because then I'm going to have, like, I'm going to have 6 is up here. I'm going to have a different yellow line, but it's going to have a greater slope, right? The slope is going to be more, right? So that means the average rate of change is going to be more. Because that is what we mean by the average rate of change, the slope. Right? Okay, so I'll have a different line. Like here. I'll just do a dashed line. Like that, and that line would be greater. Have a greater slope. Okay? Now, our goal, in the, in, when we talk about the derivative, now the, uh, the goal is to find the slope of the tangent line at this point. We want to find the slope of the tangent line. So here, we want to find the slope of this line. This is called the tangent line. I shouldn't have drawn it like that. I don't think it looks like that. I don't know what it looks like. But anyway. That, what, the slope of that blue line. Okay, our goal is to find that slope. Now, if I say, I think I said, maybe I said this to you once before, I don't remember, but uh, if I ask you, what's the slope of the, let's say this is 3 comma 2, what's the slope of the line through that point? What's the slope of that line, the line that goes through that point? Anybody? So that's, you should be angry at me for asking that question because it doesn't make sense. Right? Why not? Because there are an infinite number of lines that go through that point, right? But if I, so really to identify a single line, I have to give you two points, right? And then if I say, okay, what's the slope of the line through these two points, you probably can find it quickly, right? Now I'm telling you that we want the slope of this blue line. And what identifies this blue line? Well, it goes through this point. What point is that again? 4 comma 1. It goes through 4 comma 1, and I say, what's the slope of that? And should you be as angry with me as you were when I asked you what was the slope of that line to that point? Should, should you be as angry? What do you think? This, this question made no sense. Does this question make no sense, or is it just hard? So I'm asking you, what's the slope of the blue line? And the, what, what's the characterization of the blue line? Tangent. It's the tangent. So, so does that question make sense? I mean, this one doesn't even make sense, because I can't say the line here. 
Right, because there's not a line, not a single line, there's many lines, so it doesn't even make sense to ask the slope of it. But is there a single line in this case? Or are there many tangent lines? No, there's only one. There's only one tangent line. So it does make sense, but I'm not giving you two points. So we intuitively feel like, oh yeah, there is just one line. Even though here, of course, we intuitively don't feel that there's only one line here. So we intuitively feel there's one line, but how do you get the slope of it? All we're given is a single point. So how can you get the slope of that? You understand? But that's not true. I said all we're given is a single point, but that's not true. If I was only given this point, I couldn't say what's the slope of that line. But I'm not only given a single point. What else am I given? I'm given another fact, which is what? That it's tangent to this curve. So that's another piece of information. Maybe we have enough information to get the slope. In this case, we definitely do not have enough information to get the slope. In this case, it doesn't seem like a very easy thing to do, but I'm not sure if it's impossible. In this case, I'm sure that it's impossible over there. Okay? So we want to get the slope of the blue line. And you say, why do we want to get the slope of the blue line? We have to do it. Okay? It's like when you're in the army, and they say you have to run over there, you just have to do it, right? <laughs> um, so you have to do it. Okay, Ali, well, there's lots of good reasons for why I want to do it, but right now I don't want to get caught, caught up in explaining it. I just want to get the slope first. Okay? So we want to get that slope. So how, how can we do it? Well, there were a lot of people that tried to do it from 2,500 years ago till about Newton's time, which was about... Who was Newton? Yeah, I think he was... He was about 1700 or something like that. So up until about 1700, they were trying to do solve this problem of how to get the slope of that tangent line. Anybody have anybody want to uh, step in front of Newton and give us the answer? Tangent. Yeah, how to get the slope of that tangent line? How? By calculating derivative. Well. Yeah, what does that mean? What's the process that we use? Where does the derivative come from is what I mean. I'm trying to motivate where the derivative comes from. So where does it, what's the process that we use? Okay, here's the process that we use. What was the slope of the yellow line? I think we did it. It was uh, three. three, right? And we also said that if we did the, the dashed yellow line, uh, the slope of that would be more than three, right? Okay? Now, what if I, so if I use this point, and we're, we're going to keep using this point, so maybe I'll put it in blue. That's not going to change that point. But if I use this point and this point, what was, uh, I'm going to, by the way, what, what is the slope for this? Oh, I didn't. Uh, this, what's the height of this point? Oh, I didn't tell you. That's maybe 6. Suppose that was 6. So what's the height of this point? 6 nine. comma what? 9. 6 comma 9, right? So what's the slope of the dashed line? 9 minus 1 is 8 over 2. So what's the slope? 4. So the slope of the dashed line is 4. The slope of the yellow line was 3. Which one is closer to the slope of the blue line? The, the slope of the dashed line or the slope of the yellow, of the solid yellow line? Which one is closer to the slope of the blue one? The solid yellow line is closer, right? So does that suggest a kind of a way of getting a better approximation for the slope of the blue line? Does that suggest some way of getting a better approximation? I'm not asking for the exact answer, but a better approximation. 
So what, what's the, what, how do we get a better approximation? So one approximation would be four. That would be if we use the slope of the dashed line. Another approximation of the slope of the blue line would be three. That's if we use the solid yellow line. So what's a better approximation than that? Instead of using this point and this point, and instead of using this point and the blue point, how about if we use like that point? Wouldn't that give me a better approximation to the slope of the blue line? So like instead of four and five, use four and a half and five. I'm sorry, use four and four and a half, right? That would give me a better approximation, right? So it's, okay, so how, how about if I want a better one? Better approximation than four and four and a half, I could use what? Four and 4.2, for example, right? Does everyone agree? And if I want a better approximation, instead of four and 4.2, I could use four and 4.1, right? And that would give me a better approximation of the slope of the blue line, right? Does everyone agree? So what are we doing to get better approximations? What are we doing? We're not changing the blue point, we're changing the other point. And what are we doing with the other point? We're moving it closer to the blue point, right? And another way of saying moving the point closer is saying the x-coordinate of it is getting closer to 4. Right? The x-coordinate was 6, then we moved it to 5, then we moved it to 4.5, then we moved it to 4.2. So what are we doing? We're letting the x-coordinate get closer and closer to what? To 4, right? So do we have any tools for writing something like that? Letting something get closer and closer to something else? Yeah. How do, what do I say? The limit as x arrow gets closer to 4. Right? Of what? Of, okay, so that's what we're doing. And what are we... And so we're letting... Get, we're going from 5, I'm sorry, from 6 to 5 to 4.5 to 4.2 to 4.1 and so on. And each time we're calculating what? The slope of the secant line, right? Each time we're calculating the slope of the secant line. So write, how do I write the slope of the secant line? Here's the function, right? How, what's, um, give me uh, the coordinates of this point again. What's the coordinates of the blue point again? Four, one. Now, is, there's another way to write that. And that is like this. Do you disagree or not? Is that correct or wrong? That's true, right? It's 4 comma f of 4. And then there's another way to write this, right? Or let's say this one. Another way to write this. What can I, how can I write that? 5 comma f of 5, right? Okay? Now, going back to this again, we're letting the values get closer and closer to 4 on the x-axis, and each time we're calculating what? The slope of the secant line. So let's write down a formula for the slope of the secant line. What is it? It's 4 minus, uh, sorry, 4 minus 1, 5 minus 4, right? But more generally, it's what? F of, we, instead of calling this 5 and F of 5, let's, let's even change it one more time and call it X comma F of X. Okay, it's F comma F of X in general. Does everyone agree with that? It's F comma F of X. So, if let's say I use this one for this point, and let's use this one for this point. So give me the formula for the slope. 
using this formula for this point, or this notation for this point, and this notation for this point. What's the slope? What's the slope? It's y here minus this y, right? Let's write that. f of x minus f of 4. And then it's x here minus this x. So that's what? x minus 4. OK? So that is what? A kind of a general formula or slopes of different secant lines that all go through this point. Right? Okay? And we said, now what, what's my goal? Remember I told you when you're in the army, you have, and I tell you you have to run, um, you have to run down to the Marushoku, Marush, Marushoku and back, then you just have to do it, right? And here, I told you, what do you have to do? Our goal is what? To find the slope of the tangent line, the blue line. And how did we, and we said that if we let x get closer and closer, we get better and better approximations to that slope, to the slope of the blue line. And here's what we said by letting x get closer and closer to 4, of this gives us better and better approximations. Okay? So this is the goal. In fact, this is called the derivative. This is called the derivative. This is what the next three or three, at least three weeks of our class are, is about. Is this or the slope of the blue line? Okay? All right, any questions? So what is the slope of the blue line? Can we get it? Sure. Can we get it? What should I do next here? Well, f doesn't, this doesn't exactly tell me any information yet. Why don't I take the formula for f and put it in here? to make it specific, because right now it's not very specific, I just said f. But f has an actual formula here. It's x minus 3 squared, right? So let's try to make it more specific, maybe we can get a more concrete answer. Let's try that. So let's just rewrite this. And what is it? Uh, x minus 3 quantity squared minus f of 4 over x minus 4. Now, actually, I should write what f of 4 is as well. So what is f of 4? One. f of 4 is 1. one. So let me as well put that in. Or I'll do it one more time. Here. I'll go up here, and I'll write it as limit. As x goes to 4, and um, I'll do two steps in one. I'll do this. I'll expand this and then change this to 1. So this is x squared minus what? 6x plus 9 minus 1. Did I do that right? Over x minus 4. Did I do that right? Is that right? Okay. I don't know. Is that any better? I'm not sure. Well, at least I can simplify this part here, right? I'll do that. you do that problem? Well, you learned how to do limits, and you had a lot of exercises where you had to do limits. Some of them were really easy to do, but some of them had problems. This one has a problem. Right? Okay, can anybody help me out here? I, what's wrong? I think I did something wrong. Did I do something wrong? Plus eight. Plus eight. Okay, plus eight, but still, I don't think, yeah, you're right, thank you. Plus eight, but I don't think still. Does that factor? 
down it. Does that factor? Uh, oh, x minus, oh yeah, it does factor. Oh good, okay, so I didn't do something wrong. So this one doesn't seem, this seems to have a problem, right? What, what do I mean by saying it has a problem? Because we're getting zero in the denominator. But we saw, we had similar problems before and sometimes they worked out. And what did I mean by work out? Sometimes you could cancel the, uh, the zero in the denominator. And in fact, you can here. So what I can factor the top part as what? Right? Did that work? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay? And now I can, now this limit might be easy to do. Because I can cancel those. So what do I get? Is that right? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay? So what do I get for the answer? 4 minus 2 is what? 2. So uh, it may be we got the answer. Maybe we got what answer? The answer of running down to Marushoku and back. Right? What was our goal here? It wasn't to go down to Marushoku and back. It was to do what? To get the slope of the blue line. Now, according to our calculations, the slope of the blue line is what? Two. Now, does it make sense that it's two? What do I mean by how can we check? Well, we can't check for sure, but what was the slope of the yellow, the dashed yellow line? I think that was, what was that, four? I think it was four. And what was the slope of the next line? Three. So maybe the slope of the blue line is two. And according to our calculations, it is two. Okay? Well, that's a kind of miracle, if you ask me. Without limit, we could never have done that, because that's kind of a miracle. Because we found the slope of a, a line where we were only given a single point. Now, it's not really a miracle, because we were also told an additional fact, which was what? That it's tangent to the curve. So it's not completely a miracle, but it's still kind of impressive that we could get that. Now, right now, it's just a geometric fact that we got here. It doesn't seem to have any relationship to anything. Like, it doesn't have any relation to business, it doesn't have any relation to physics, it doesn't have any relation to anything else. It was just like a geometric fact. We just were able to find the slope of the tangent line. Okay, but it turns out that you can apply it in many, many places. But we got it. Okay, does everyone see what we did? That's the general process that we want to follow. Now I want to make it a little bit more general. I want to make it a little bit more general. So what would make it more general than what we did? So here's what we did. What would make it more general than that? There are two ways that we can make it more general. What are they? What would make it, what, what, how was this specific? In what ways was this specific? In two ways. First of all, I gave you a specific function. And secondly, I gave you a particular point, this blue point. So I'd like to make it, I'd like to make this whole process general. So instead of saying, at a for a particular function, I'd like to give the calculations for it in general. And instead of a particular point, I'd like to give it uh, for, a, for a general point. Now that sounds like it doesn't make sense, but it, I don't mean anything really, really uh, strange. I just, it's just a, I'm just saying, suppose we have a function like that, f. So just call it f instead of this particular function. And instead of a, uh, instead of a particular point, let's just call it x, 0. And then this point would be called y, 0. Or what's the alternative notation for this? X zero comma f of x zero. Shh. 
Okay, so now I've made it general. Okay, I'm just talking about a general function f, f, I didn't say specifically which one, and a general point x0, y0. Let's do exactly what we did, I mean, let's write out the beginning of what we wrote out over here. Uh, not all this, because we can't, once we get to here, we can't go to here because this was the specific function, so I don't want to go that far. I don't want to talk about a specific function, but I just want to get this. So, so can I erase this now? Can I erase that? Just because I'm running this, the way we have this set up with these uh, screens, I don't have much blackboard space. So let me just erase this part. And write it in general. So instead of going to 4, I want to go to what? x0. So let me write that part. And I still want f of x here minus f of what? Instead of f of 4, I want what? f of x0. And then it's x minus what? x0. Okay, so everyone follow that? And that is called the derivative at x0. So what is the derivative at, I mean, what do I mean by the derivative at x0? What does this calculate? What does this do? What, is the, what did this do? This calculated the slope of the blue line. What do I mean by the blue line? What do I mean by the blue line? Tangent. The tangent line, right? So this is going to calculate the slope of a tangent line. Okay? So, um, so that's it. Okay? That, that has a name. It's called the derivative. But anyway, for now, Let's just say it calculates the slope of the tangent line. Now I just want to make one more last change to this. Here was x0, and then we took like another point up here, right? And we calculated the slope, right? And we called this point x, right? I called it, for, at first it was like 5 and 6, but in general I called it x, right? So this was x and this was x0. Now I'm just going to do one more thing, and I'm just going to call the distance from here to here. First of all, what's, what's, the, what's one notation for the distance between here and here? How many people are studying their Japanese today? I think at least half of you are doing your Japanese homework. Okay, but that's all right. I guess I can't worry about that. But um, the thing is that if you're going to do that, don't blame me if you don't get an A. I mean, I don't mind. I, I assume that you know you know enough so that you don't need to pay attention. So that's okay if that's if that's the case. But I just don't want to feel bad if you don't pass the course or if you don't get a good grade. Um, but anyway, so. What's, what's one name for this? The distance between here and here, one name for that is delta x. Okay, but a lot of folks, uh, a lot of the time, they'll also call it h. Oh, it's a difference, you call it h or delta x, it doesn't matter. So what is h equal to, or what is delta x equal to? It's x minus x0. In other words, h is x minus x0. Okay, so that's, they call that h often. So, what is this then? I just said, x minus x0 can be called what? Can be called delta x, sometimes we'll, we'll, call, we'll put delta x there. In fact, but in this book, or at least right now, sometimes, I think, even in this book, sometimes they'll use delta x and sometimes they'll use h. So, just have to get used to either one. But right now they're using h. So what is this equal to? H. So let me put that. H 
And if if this, I, I can also, of course, I can also write this, right? X equals x zero plus h, right? X is this plus this distance, right? X equals this plus h, of course. Right? That's not very mysterious at all. So uh, I can write. Um, what did I just say? X equals x0 plus h. So here, I can change that. Instead of x, I can write it as x0 plus h. And then minus f of x0. And now, remember we said the limit as x goes to x0. Let's look at that picture again. The limit as this moves closer and closer to this. What does that mean about h? If this is moving closer to this, what's happening to h? It's shrinking, right? It's getting smaller. In other words, h is going to 0. So instead of writing x goes to here, I can also write h goes to 0. So that's usually the way they write it. And that is called the derivative. Okay. But all it is, is this or this. In other words, all it is, is the slope of these different lines. And we're, uh, they're approaching the slope of the blue line, and that's what we want. The slope of the blue line. And we just let, if we do the limit, we say that we get the slope of the blue line. Okay, so this is the formula. Now, if you wanted to replace that, uh, instead of h, you could use delta x over here, because h and delta x are the same. So some folks will say delta x goes to 0, x0 plus delta x, delta x. Okay, so you can call it h or you can call it delta x, doesn't matter. Okay? And this is called the derivative. And it's kind of it very important, in math anyway, and it has several different notations. Are there any Japanese words that have, that can be expressed in, with two different kanji? Anybody think of a Japanese word that you can express it one way or another? Like what? Anybody tell me a word, Japanese word? You can express it with this kanji or that kanji. Which one? Hayai? Hayai has two different kanji you can express it with? Meaning also. Oh, no, no, I mean with the same meaning. No, no, no. Anything? Nothing? I know, but... No, 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 I'm saying... What did you say? One kanji has what? That I don't think is true, but that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for a meaning that has two different kanji. I think kanji can definitely have more than one meaning. Well, I don't know, maybe not, but I think so. I don't think it exists. But I want to, no? I don't think it exists. Are there any Japanese people here? No. Any Chinese people? How about one Chinese character? I'm sorry, one. Chinese word that you can express with two different characters. Two separate characters, like here's a character, it means this word, but here's another character, it also means this word. No? Never? Doesn't happen? Okay, maybe, maybe it doesn't happen. I thought it might happen. I can't think of any case, but... Alright, well anyway, uh, in, for the derivative, we have a couple different symbols for the same thing. Okay? So we have this symbol. We have another symbol, which means the same thing as this, and that's this. We have also this. Like that. They all mean the same thing. Okay? I don't know if you can do that with kanji or not have different kanji all mean the same thing. 
But in this case, we have three different symbols that mean exactly the same thing. Okay? And they all mean this. But what is this again, in concrete terms? In terms of that picture over there, what is it? Slope. The slope of the tangent line. Where? Which tangent line? Each zero. The one that goes here, in other words, the one that goes through x, uh, whose x coordinate is x sub zero. Okay? So this gives me the slope of the tangent line where x is x sub zero. And we, we got a specific example here, and what was that slope? What was the answer? Two. Right? So we found an actual answer. Let's do another, let's do another uh, actual example. Let's, somebody give me a function that you want to know about. Somebody give me a function that you want to know about. Anybody? Which one? What? I can't hear you. E to the power of Oh, come on. <laughs> That's too hard. <laughs> e to the power what? 26 plus 3? But that's not a function, is it? E to the power 26 plus 3 is not a function, is it? Oh, 26 x. That is a function, but that's much too hard. Okay, give me another one. Yeah. Okay. Square root of x minus 1. Okay. Square root of x minus 1. Okay, still too hard. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get to that one, and we're going to get to that one, but I'm just trying to... Okay, um, Actually, yeah. X squared plus okay, okay, that's good. I like that. That's, that's good. Okay, so he said uh, f of x equals x squared plus 5. Okay, good. Now, suppose... So, first of all, what does that look like? So plus 5 means 5, and it's a parabola, right? And it goes through this point, right? So it's a parabola like that. So when x is uh, 0, what is f? What is y? When x is 0, y is 5. When x is 1, y is? When x is 1, y is 6. When x is 2, y is 9, right? Okay, good. Alright? Now, suppose I want to know the slope. So, first of all, it looks like this, right? of the tangent line here. So the slope of this line. The line that just touches that curve at that one place. Like I said, right now this is just a geometrical issue. And you say, well, who cares? But it's just, but we will have use for it. But right now I just want to be able to find it like a puzzle. Okay? So can we do it? Yeah, we can now because we have the formula for the derivative. Okay? So let's use that formula right now. Now, actually, the calculation is going to be very similar to the last one, I guess, but maybe not exactly the same. So let's try it. Uh, so let me write it here first. Limit h goes to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And now we want to put in the specific function here. And also the specific point. What's the coordinates of this point? 1, comma, 6. six. six. Okay. Alright, so let's um, put in 
the specific point and the specific function and see if we get... Now, should I get a formula here when I do this or should I get a number? When I find the slope of this blue line, is it going to be a formula or a number? It better, it should be a number. It's a specific line. So we should get a number out as the answer. So let's see what we get. So f of x plus h, let's write it kind of generally first and then drop in the 1 and the 6 later at the end. So let's do it kind of generally at first and then drop in 1 comma 6 at the end for x and y. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So f of x is x squared plus 5. So let's do this. So f of, uh, so, okay. So minus f of x, right? So let's write that part, that's easy. Minus, because f of x is right here. So minus x squared plus 5. So that part was not so hard, that's right here. Right? Okay, now I need to know what is f of x plus h, because I, I need to put this part down here. So what is f of x again? Here's f of x, so what's f of x plus h? x. So instead of, putting, instead of putting x in, I'm putting x plus h in. So what do I get? x plus h squared plus 5, right? Does everyone agree with that? Is that right? So I'll just put that, so that's what f of x plus h is, but we're supposed to put f of x plus h here. So let me put in x squared plus h, did I do it right? No, sorry. Squared plus 5. Okay? And then h is on the bottom. Okay? Now here's something that you probably, you could easily be confused about. Because we really never saw this before. What is the, okay, let me ask you a question. What's the variable here in this expression? What's the variable in this expression? X. So a lot of people will say x, and that's certainly right. But from the, from the perspective that we want to do it right now, I want to think of h as the variable. Remember, remember when we do limits and we let x get closer and closer to something? That thing that we're letting get closer and closer to something else is the variable, right? In all those limit problems, that was the variable. It so happens that it's not x that we're letting get closer and closer to something, it's h. So really, we're treating x as though it's kind of fixed, and h is the thing that's changing. Of course, x also changes in some other perspectives, but right for now, we're thinking that h is the variable, okay? So, okay. That's just something to know, just a kind of perspective. So I'll just keep writing that, though. And can we simplify this? Maybe. The best way to check is to expand this, right? So we get x squared plus 2h plus h squared plus 5 minus x squared minus 5 over h. Right? And now, can we simplify that? Maybe. Now what? We can cancel that. Cancel that. So what do we get? 2h plus h squared over h. 2hx. Huh? There should be 2hx. 2h plus h squared. 2hx plus x squared. h squared. In the denominator. x squared plus 2h plus h squared plus 5 minus x squared minus 5. x squared cancels with that. 5 cancels with that. 2h plus h squared. No? 2h x plus h squared. That should be x. 2h x. I don't know. I think this 
is right. Can I make a mistake? Yes. Okay, where is my mistake? 2H. 2H. Okay. X squared plus H plus H, 2H plus H squared. What? What am I doing wrong? Okay, come and show me quickly. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, 2hx, h squared over h, he's right, thank you. Okay, so, now what? Now we ran into this kind of problem before. We said let h go to zero, what do we get on the top? Zero, and on the bottom, what do we get? Zero, that's not good, but we were able to fix it sometimes. And we're able to fix it here. So what do we get? So we can cancel the h's and we get 2x plus h, uh, sorry, yeah, right, 2x plus h, right? Okay? And now I said, let a, uh, I'm sorry, now I said h is kind of the variable here. Of course x is also the variable, but we're letting h go to zero. Okay, I, this used to confuse me a lot. I don't know, maybe it doesn't confuse you. But this gives me a lot. But anyway, so finally we get what? If I let this go to zero, all I'm left with is 2x. Right? And so, that's supposed to be the formula for the derivative. But I said, wait, I don't want to get a, I don't want to get a formula. Remember over here I said, should I get a formula or a number? Right? And I don't want to get a formula. So what do I have to do next? What haven't I finished yet? I said for the specific point, one comma six, right? So for the specific point, one comma six, x equals what? At that particular point, x equals what? One. So what I do now is finally at the end, put in x equals one, and that gives me the answer. And what is the answer then? 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So according to our calculations anyway, the slope of that blue line is 2. Now that is exactly the answer we got before because actually it's basically the same thing that we did before. It's slightly different, but the idea that it's basically the same. Okay, but now actually let's revert back to the fact that we got 2x. What does that suggest? That suggests that I can now tell you the slope of any blue line as long as you tell me which x you want. For example, how about when x is negative 1? This is supposed to tell me the slope. Does it make sense? What happens when I put negative 1 into here? What do I get? Minus 2. What does that mean about the slope? Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. decreasing. Does that make sense here? Here, what's the slope of this blue line? Is it positive or negative? Negative, so at least it makes sense. I mean, at least it doesn't contradict our, our intuition, or whatever that's called. It doesn't contradict that, right? Okay, so at least that makes sense. And how about if I did it at x equals 3? Let's just check one thing, or I'm sorry, x equals 2. Should it be more than the slope of this blue line or not? The slope of this blue line was what? We just did that, that was 2. The slope of, the, of this blue line, if I did it from here, is that going to be more than the slope of this blue line or less? This is going to be more. And what does our formula tell us it's going to be? We put in x equals 2, and what do we get in our formula? 4. So at least it's not contradicting our common sense. Right? Our intuition. Okay? So. This is apparently, according to our calculations, this is the, gives us the slope for any x that we want. One last check. Before you put in, before you use this formula, just tell me, without looking at that formula, 
what is the slope of this blue line? Don't use the formula. Just tell me, what's the slope of that line? Zero. Zero, right? This is flat, right? The slope is zero. What point is this? X equals what? Zero. 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 What is the formula to tell us the slope is? Does it agree or disagree? It agrees, right? Because when I put in zero, I get zero. Okay? So, our calculation seems right, and it is right, actually. And, he's, and I said, give me any function, and someone gave me this function. And now we found out some interesting information about it. We can get the slope of the tangent line anywhere. Again, this is just a geometrical fact at this point. It doesn't seem to have any relationship to anything related to business, but it does a lot. Okay? So, what's this thing called again? It's called the derivative of a function f. So you start with a function f, you do this to it, and this particular case, when we did that to it, we got this, 2x. So we start, uh, let's, let's write that fact down. We started Started with started we started with that. We put it into the formula, we went through all the calculations, we ended up with this. So what with the way we record that fact is we say f prime is equal to 2x. Or we can write it like this. So if f equals this, then f prime equals this. Or if f equals this, then the derivative of f is this. And what does the derivative tell us? It tells us the slope of tangent lines for any x. Okay? Now again, I still, I know it's still kind of abstract, but what the heck, who cares? Right? I understand. It's not concrete yet. But that's what we've done so far. I'll try and make it concrete soon, but I have to do it step by step. So, um, or instead of writing it this way, you could write it this way. You can also write that. It's the same thing, just another way of writing it. Okay? Now, this looks like you're dividing something, but basically, no. This is just a single notation. You basically can't split it up. Now, I'm going to break that rule actually at one point and later, but basically, that's true. Okay? All right, good. Now, let's do it one more time, just to prove to you that this might be right. Let's do it one more time. Okay, give me a simpler function than he gave me. A simpler function than he gave me. 2x, perfect. Okay, so instead of starting with this one, let's start with a simpler one. So let's start with, I'll make it a little more complicated, uh, f of x equals, let me make it 3x plus, Okay, it's still, it's simpler than the other one, right? Why, in what sense is it simpler? The other one was uh, second degree, and this one is called first degree or linear, right? Okay? All right, now, if we do these calculations, what are we getting? What is this all trying to give us? In terms of the picture again? The slope of the tangent line, right? The slope of the blue line. But what... What is that going to do? What are we going to be doing in this case with such a simple function? First of all, what does this look like? Just a straight line with y-intercept 1 and slope of 3. So it looks like something like this, right? So again, when we do this, what are we doing? We're getting the slope of the tangent line. Now over here, the slope of the tangent line was changing all the time, right? 
Here was negative, here was zero, here was two, somewhere something else, something else. It was changing all the time. But that was a more complicated function than this, right? What about here? Is the slope changing all the time? No. In fact, it's never changing, right? This is a straight line. The slope is always the same, right? So if we do all that hard work, what better our answer be? What must our answer be? After we do all those long calculations that we're going to do, what must the answer be? It's supposed to give us the slope of the tangent line. What The tangent line is the same as the line itself, right? It's the same line. If I talk about the tangent line right here, what, what line is that? It's the same as the line. So what's the, what better the answer be at the end of the, all the calculations? Better be three, right? Because that's the slope of this line, right? So after we do all those calculations that I wrote over here and then I erased, I hope that I get what answer? Three. And one more fact. I hope that I get three no matter what x I put in there. Right? No matter what x I put in, I want to get three. Before, the answer was this. That answer depends on x, right? If I put in x equals 0, I get 0. If I put in x equals 1, I get 2. If I put in x equals negative 1, I get what? Negative 2, right? So it depends on x. But I don't want the answer to depend on x here. Because the slope doesn't change. Right? So I hope that when I do all the calculations, I don't get a formula like 2x. I just get what? Three. Let's see if we get three. Okay, doing the formula. So let me write it again here. There's the formula. Let's do that for this function this time. Last time we started with this function. Let's do it with this function. Now I hope that at the end I'm going to get what? Three. Right? I hope that at the end I'm going to get three, but let's see if it really happens. Okay? Or maybe it doesn't happen, then we're all we're wrong. We're doing something wrong, we don't know what's wrong. But if it's right, if everything works, we should get three. After we start from here, go through all the calculations with this formula, we better I hope we get three. So let's try. So let's Okay, let's say, uh, so uh, the formula here is, so what do I put, what's f? 3x plus 1. But so, so we need two parts here, this part, and this part, this part, and this part. So this part is the easier one, so let's do that one first. f of x, 0 is what? Uh, okay. Is what? 3x3 three, three plus 1. And f of x0 plus h is what? Putting x0 plus h in here, what do you get? 3x0 plus h plus 1. And then divided by h, and I need the limit here. Sorry. Right? Okay, let's see what happens. I want this to end, end up being 3. Okay, let's see. I got 3x0 plus 3h plus 1 minus 3x0 minus 1 over h. Erase this because this is in the way. And now, and I forgot the limit again. And now, cancel with that, cancel with that. What do I get? Limit. H goes to zero. Three H. And what happens? The H is canceled. 
and I just get 3, which is what? What we hope to get, and we did. Okay, so this formula seems to work, right? The derivative, right? Okay, so we've done it three times at least, and each time we supposedly have calculated the slope of the tangent lines. Okay, any questions about this? All right, now, actually we went much further than we went, than I've done in, than in this homework set, but still, this homework set should make sense now. So let's look at it. So what they're asking us to do here is estimate the derivative from the average rates of change. So remember, what that means is, sorry, what that means is that the derivative, we have a function like that, and the derivative, say here, we can estimate it as the average rate of change from here to here, from the blue dot to this white dot, or the blue dot to this white dot, or the blue dot to this white dot, right? Those are all estimates of the derivative. Okay, now we already know how to do the derivative. We've gone much further than what they're doing in this problem. But the idea is that the slope of the blue line, the derivative, can be estimated by the slopes of the average rates of change. Okay? So that's what they're doing here. So um, here's h. And what's happening to h? h starts out at negative 1, then it goes to negative 0 0.1, which is bigger, this number? Uh, I'm, or I'm sorry, which is closer to 0, this number or this number? first number or the second number? The second number is closer to zero. And this one is closer, to, even closer to zero. And this one is even closer to zero. So what's happening? H is getting closer and closer to zero, right? That's what we wrote here. H is getting closer and closer to zero. So as H gets closer and closer to zero, calculate the average rate of change. That's what this is. This formula was the average rate of change. So here's the average rate of change. As h gets closer and closer to zero, here's the average rate of change. I'm sorry, no. Here's the average rate of change when h gets closer to zero from above zero. Here's the average rate of change as h gets closer to zero from below zero. So the average rate of change is doing what? It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. What, are the, what, what does it seem to be getting closer and closer to? Maybe 0 0.5, right? So you could, I have, so here they accept 0 0.5 as the answer. Okay, is that clear? So you have a bunch of problems like that. How about here? Uh, the graph of a function is shown together with the tangent line at point P. Estimate the derivative at the corresponding value. So what, what would you estimate the derivative is here? So it means the slope of that red line, which is what? Zero. Should be zero, and that's the answer, right? Okay, so everyone get it? The derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line. What's the slope of the tangent line here? The slope of that red line is zero, right? So you would put zero. Does everyone get this? Okay, another question. In the graph, say at which label point, so at P, at Q, or at R, the slope of the tangent is greatest and least, in the sense that negative 7 is less than 1. So where is the slope greatest? At P, Q, or R? R, R right? The slope is greater here. And where is it least? At P, right? So answer is uh, R and P. Okay, everyone understand that? Same thing here, and here, and here. 
Okay. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Derivatives algebraically. Oops. Compute f prime algebraically for this function. Well, we just did this. Except we didn't use x squared minus 6. What did we do it for? Somebody gave me a function. What was the function they gave me? x squared plus 5, I think they said, right? It's going to be the very, almost the same cal set of calculations that we just did. But instead of x squared minus 6, we're going to use, we used x squared plus 5, but it's going to be very, very similar. And the answer is actually going to still come out to be 2x. Okay, but you have to do it yourself to make sure. But the answer is going to turn out to be 2x. So if the answer comes out to be 2x, then what's the derivative at 9, at when a equals 9? If the derivative is 2x, remember, the derivative was, where, where did I have it? I, wrote, I had it down here somewhere. 2x was the derivative. It's going to turn out to be the same answer this time, actually. 2x. So when a is 9, what's the derivative? 18, right? Put in. Um, let me write that down. We had this function here, right? And what was the derivative? 2x, right? So if I want to know what's the derivative at when x equals 3, I write it like this. That means what's the derivative when x equals 3? So what's the answer? 2 times 3. This means when x equals 3, what's the slope? Okay, what's the answer? 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, if I want to know the derivative when x equals 5, that means what's the slope of the tangent line when x equals 5, what do I put in here? 5. So I get what? 10. Okay, everyone understand this notation? Okay. So here they're asking what's the derivative at 9? Here they're asking what's the derivative at 9? And the answer is, if the formula is the same, which it turns out to be, it is 2x, the answer will be 18. Okay, now how about this one? You don't even need to do the calculation here. What, why don't I need to do the calculation here? What kind of function is this? It's a line. It's a linear function, right? So does the derivative, I'm sorry, does the slope ever change? No, and the derivative gives us the slope. Do you know what the slope is for this line? It's negative 4, right? So what's the derivative for this line? Same thing. Negative 4. So the answer is negative 4. It doesn't matter what a is. It's always going to be negative 4. Do you understand that? Okay? It doesn't matter what a is. No matter what you put in, what x value you put in, the slope is always the same. So the derivative will be the same all the time. It'll always be negative 4. Here, it's not the same. So you have to do the calculation. So I went through a couple calculations on the board, and this will be posted if our video works. This will be posted on the internet, so you can watch it again. And you'll have to carry out a slightly more complicated set of calculations to do this one. Because we did something like 9x squared before, but this is plus x. So the calculation is just a little bit more complicated. Uh, comp complicated. Of course, I think they also do it in the book, so you can probably look at it in the book. Uh, but you'll have to carry out a slightly different calculation to get the answer. Okay? And that's what you'll do for all of these. Now, finally, how much time do we have? Nine minutes. Okay, let me try and explain what use this is. 
by doing a problem like this one, or let's try this one. Okay. Anybody know where this country is? Okay, everybody knows Mexico. And this looks like the name of an oil company, and it is an oil production company. So they make what? Oil. <laughs> right. Okay? So daily oil production by Mexico's national oil company. By the way, what I, I can guess that the M stands for what? Mexico. And this is probably PE for petroleum. By the way. Okay? Anyway, uh, can be approximated by this. Millions of barrels. And T is between 1 and 9, where T is time in years since the start of 2000. So, is this an increase, uh, is this an upside down parabola or a right side up parabola? Right side up parabola, upside down parabola. I think it's upside down. So, but I'm not sure which part of the curve this is, but what they're saying is that oil production, let's, I think it's probably like this, might look like that. Okay, according to that, it might start actually decreasing, but maybe they're only talking about this part of the curve. Okay? Between here and here, so it's increasing. I'm not sure if that's right, but okay? So when T equals zero, how much oil were they making? T equals zero means when? What year? When T is zero, what year are we talking about? The year 2000, right? When T is zero, how much oil did they make? This term is what? Two points. Is zero. This term is zero. So the answer is 2.9 million barrels, right? Okay, everyone get that? Now, what do they ask you to find? Find the derivative function. Now, in, this is P instead of F, or instead of Y, so the notation for the derivative is not dy dx, like I have somewhere, or like I had before, not dy dx, we write it as dp dx. Okay, because P is taking the place of Y. Okay? Everyone get that? So P is taking the place of Y, so it's dp, and it's not dx, it's dt. T is taking the place of x. Okay? So they want us to calculate the derivative of this. But instead of doing that, because we don't have much time, let's talk about the meaning of that once we get the answer. What is it going to tell us? What if, what, why do they want us to calculate the derivative? Let's talk about that. So let's suppose this is production and this is time. So if we're calculating the slope, and that is what the derivative calculates, how about here? The slope here compared to the slope here. Which one is greater? At A or at B? The slope is greater at A. What does that mean? What's the slope? That's like the rate of change. That means as you move in time, how much increase do you get? Right? So what, where's the rate of change more? At A or at B? At A, right? At A, the rate of change is, is more. Right? So that means that like, um, Rate of change, what, what good is the rate of change in this case? Rate of change. Mm, actually, not that clear that that particular example. 
it's not that clear. It's just saying that uh, as T increases, you're getting more more increase here than you are here, but that's not very clear actually. That doesn't really help us that to understand it. Let's do one more. Let's do this one, the one before it. This is actually where this uh, this uh, derivative comes from. They say a stone is dropped from a height of 350 feet. Let's say 350 meters instead of 350 feet. So a person standing here, and they take a stone, and they drop it. And this is uh, this distance is 350 meters. Let's say. Okay. Now, its height uh, is given by this function. So the height, h or s, s equals 350 minus 16 t squared. But I'm going to change that to minus 9.8 t squared, because I changed it to meters, so I want to change that. Okay? Now what does that mean? When t is zero, what's the height? What's s? s stands for the height. So here's s. So when t equals zero, what's the height? 350, right? So at the beginning, it's 350. When t equals one, what's the height? It's 350 minus 9.8, which is less than 350, so it's fallen, right? When t equals 2, it's fallen more, right? When, right? when t equals 3, it's fallen even more. Now, what's happening to the speed of this, or the velocity of this rock? Well, mo like most rocks, as, you, as it falls further, it's going faster and faster, right? Okay, what is that? How do we talk? What is speed? How, what does speed mean? Kilometers per hour, right? Kilometers per hour, km per hour. In general, speed is the change in distance, S stands for distance here, divided by the change in time, right? How far it's gone over a certain time interval, right? That's called speed. So what, what's happening to the speed? It's, it's going faster and faster, right? And we don't have enough time to do it. Okay, next time we'll talk about what use the derivative is. Okay? So for now, you just have the kind of geometric problem of the slope of a tangent line. And next time, We'll get into this problem and, the, and what's called marginal cost problems, marginal profit, marginal revenue. All these things are the derivatives. Okay? So we'll do that next time. But before next time, you have a short, or next time rather, you have a short test. Okay? It won't be long. But uh, don't be late because you won't get extra time. Okay, the test starts promptly at second period in this room. And you'll have only a short period of time to do it. I'll collect the test after that. And you don't have extra time, so don't be late. Okay, and then we'll have uh, another lecture.